This is how you can take control of your money. If you want to be wealthy, you got a budget. It's that simple. And it bothers me that when I meet middle class individuals, they do not budget. If you're going to do anything successful around money, budgeting is a part of it. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. If you want to be wealthy, you got a budget. It's that simple. If, if, if you want to have true financial freedom, you have to budget. If you want to build a successful business, you got to budget. If you want to have a successful family, if you want to pass down generational wealth, you got to budget. If you want to buy your dream car one day, your dream home one day, and have the freedom to enjoy it, you got to budget. As you can see, if you're going to do anything successful around money, budgeting is a part of it. I have never met a millionaire within my circle who cannot tell me. Let me sure I'm saying this right. Okay, yes. I've never met a millionaire who cannot tell me where they spent the $100 at. Because they know where every dollar of their money is going. And it bothers me that when I meet middle class individuals, they do not budget. They have all this explanation of, I don't need a budget. I got this. I got that. No, 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 no. Uh, I know where every dollar of my money is going. Every dollar that I spend has an assignment attached to it. When I spend it on team members, I have an assignment attached to it. Hey, here, I'm giving you this. This is what I need back in return. When I give it to a friend, hey, I'm giving it this. This is what I need back in return. I know where every dollar of my money is going. And a part of me is going to say this, and I know some of y'all are going to cringe, and I know some of y'all are going to be like, what in the world, Anthony? But I, 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 not budgeting is not a sin. Let me say that again. To us Christians, not budgeting is not a sin, but it is bad stewardship. How do you expect God to give you a quarter million dollars a year and you don't even know how to control the quarter million dollars a year, but you're asking God to give you more money, but you're not even taking the time to sit down and actually budget. You're not even taking the time to sit down, say, sit down and say, you know what, God, I know you gave me this, this $50,000 a year. God, I know you gave me this, this $80,000 a year. God, I know you gave me this six-figure a year. God, and I'm going to show you that I am going to steward this money well. Because here is the truth, you guys. The Bible says, Christians, if we're practicing a Christian faith, the Bible says give 10% back. Cool, great. Then a lot of us get twisted. We're giving a 10, but we're, we're thinking the other 90% of it is ours. No, we're just called to manage that well. And you cannot manage 90% well if you are not taking the time to sit down and put it on paper. The Bible says it clearly. Where there is no vision written down, that's where people perish. So where there is no vision for your money, where there is no plan for your, your money, where there is no system for your money, that's why you're broke. So today, I literally want to break down how I budget, how Anthony O'Neill budgets his money, how I spend every dollar on paper just so that I can have freedom to enjoy my money. A budget doesn't mean that you that you that you're broke. No, a budget means that you care about the 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 finances and the resources that God put into your hand. And so because you care about it, ah, I feel like preaching. Um, because you care about it, you're gonna write down the plan for it. Isn't it funny? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not endorsing, um, 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 borrowing money. I'm not doing that at all. But isn't it funny when you walk into a bank, they say, do you have what? A business plan before they give you their money. And God is simply saying the same thing. Like, yo, if you want me to give you more, give me and show me you know how to operate off of a plan before I give you money. Not before I loan you money, before I give you some of the resources that I have, I want to make sure that you can steward it well. Woo! 
Some of y'all <clears throat> are a budget away from a pay raise. Mm, I'm speaking spiritually. Some of us are a budget away from making a million dollars. Some of us are a budget away from getting that business off the ground. Some of us are a budget away from our first home. God is waiting for us just to see if we can just simply budget and put a vision on paper to make sure that if he gives us that pay raise, that if he gives us more income, we're going to be all right. So today I'm going to show you how to simply base, not base, how to simply budget your money. Just basic, basic, just basic math on what to do using the, the every dollar zero base budget formula. I said every dollar because I use the app called Every Dollar. I still use it. I still rock my boys and my family and, and my sisters over there at Ramsey Solutions because I think that their Every Dollar app is the best app because literally you cannot close out the app. <laughs> you can close out the app, but you cannot complete your budget until you spend every dollar on paper. And this is called a zero base budget format that I use that I highly recommend that you use. I'm going to put the, the link to the every dollar app in today's show notes. I want you to check it out, go download it, go rock with them. It's an amazing app. If you don't use every dollar, that's totally fine. You need to get an app to budget. If you got to do an Excel, do whatever you got to do. So you can do a zero base budgeting uh, format. I promise you it will save your life. But let's, let's, let's hey, Walt, send me over to my iPad real quick. Uh, Walt is our new guy, man. He's helping out CJ, my main producer. He's our assistant uh, show producer, uh, video producer. And uh, wel welcome, Walt, to the team. Drop him some love in the comments, y'all. Um, but I I'm super excited because I really want to give you all the keys to, to budgeting. And the very first key to budgeting is this thing, all of your income all of your income on a sheet of paper, all right? So let's just say for an example, let's say just, I'm, I'm gonna use simple numbers, right? Simple numbers, nothing major, nothing big, but make it make it very realistic. Let's just say you see, I'm gonna do green. Let's just say you see $4,000 a month from your job net, all right? I'm just rounding numbers up. And let's just say you see another $1,000 a month from your side side job all right net so let's just say you have a total of five thousand dollars a month in income so the very first thing when it comes to having a zero base budget is to list all of your income and when you list all of your income you you now you've set the stage of this is where I'm starting. So now that we've talked about this is where we're starting, we have an income of $5,000. This, this is the budget that we're working with off today, all right? So the very next thing is going to be, okay, this is, I'm gonna put this over here, this is our income. The very next thing is gonna be, what are we giving? Like what, what, what are we giving? How are we being generous? You see, um, a lot of people get so confused. that Oh, man, if I give away money, I'm taking money away from myself and my family. And the truth of the fact is, actually, the more you give away within your means, right, the more you give away, the more you're showing God how generous you are and how loving you are. And honestly, the more God wants to bless you. Wealthy people have identified one of the secrets of building more wealth is giving away as much as they possibly can within reason. So one of the things that I do to practice my giving is I give to my local church and I honestly give over and beyond. And so for me, if I'm at $5,000, then very next thing is I'm going to be giving away. I want you to really, 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 really think about it is your tithe and offerings. Make sure I have the right color on here. All right. Actually, this needs to be red because now we're going to expenses. So now we have our income. That's cash flow coming in. Expenses are cash flow going out, all right? So in red, my tithe is actually going to be $500. This is going to be my tithe, okay? All right, so it's your tithe. So out of the $5,000 of income that you have coming in, 
we're giving away $500. And technically, I don't want to be too spiritual here, but we're giving God back $500 for kingdom building. And when we say we're giving God back $500, this is whatever church you're going to, whatever church is feeding you, whatever pastor is feeding you, um, you're giving back to that local church and you're showing God that, hey, I am being obedient to what you have set forth for us. Here is my $500 going back. And then on top of that, you guys, I'm always going to say, give another 10% when it comes to offering on top of your tithe. And so if you're giving $500 a month in tithe, then you're going to give, i say what, another $50 a month in offering. Okay, let me make sure this is correct so y'all can understand that. That's another $50 a month in offering. So that now, here's what we're doing. We have income coming in. Then we have expenses going out. Our tithe and offerings are not really an expense. That is I call that a seed. I call that being obedient. I call that being generous. Now what we're doing is we're activating and we're showing God that he can trust us with all of our income. And we're honestly saying, God, not only can you trust us, but God, you can trust me with more. <laughs> The more I can give away, that means the more you're blessing me, God. So keep on blessing me, and I'm going to keep on being obedient. That is a secret to building wealth. We're talking about budgeting today, but this is icing on the cake. You want to build extreme wealth? You want to give more. So after you pay God, after you're being generous, right, what's the very next thing you should be paying? Yourself. You should be paying yourself. You should be paying into your emergency fund. You should be paying into um, any type of savings that you currently have. But right now, I want to keep it very basic, very simple. Our goal is we should be maxing out. If you have debt, you should be putting at least $1,000 to one month of expenses inside of your savings account. If you don't have debt, you should be building at least three to six months of your savings uh, for emergencies. So I'm going to put over here, I'm going to act like we have very minimum debt, so we're not actually saving a whole lot. So I'm going to say, you know what, on a monthly basis, we are actually saving. Let's just say we're putting away $200 a month into savings because we're trying to get to the 1K plus mark, all right? 1K plus, 1K, let's say I'm saying 1K minimum to about to about one month of expenses, all right? So we are already at $750 out of the $5,000 that we have. Then from there is gonna be our next thing, it's gonna be our housing. We're gonna list out everything when it comes to our housing. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to our housing, okay? When it comes to our housing, you should be at 25% of your take home pay when it comes to, so right here from the 5,000, you should be at 25% of your take home pay when it comes to your rent or your mortgage, okay? Or your mortgage. So this means that your rent or mortgage should be no more than $1,250, okay? This is gonna be rent or mortgage. Now, some of y'all are saying, well, is this even possible? Man, I'm paying, I'm paying more. I'm paying more than, the, than, than that. Well, yes, it is possible. Here's what I am going to say, though. Can I be real with you today? I'm going to be real with you today. And those of you all listening on podcasts, I would encourage you to come over to YouTube because I have my iPad up on the screen where I'm writing all this down. All right. And so is it possible? Yes. But is it possible that you may be living in your dream neighborhood or in your dream home? Maybe it's not. Maybe you're not living there. It, 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 is, it, it, is it possible that, you know, you may have to miss out on your first choice of a home? Yes. Is it possible you may have to miss out on your second choice of a home? Yes. It is possible. <clears throat> but here's the thing. 
Here's why living at 25% when it comes to your mortgage payment, when it comes to your rent payment is so important because you want to have margin and room to breathe to do other things. Oftentimes, this is what I see people doing. They spend a lot of money on their homes because they want a neighborhood, because they feel like a neighborhood may not be as safe as the next because it has some older homes in it or it may be on the older side of town. Man, uh, that don't mean nothing. That, that, that don't mean nothing. I'm not saying move into the hood and where you're hearing shots fired every single day, but just because it doesn't have the white picket fence and beautiful neighbors out there saying, hey, Tom, how are you? Doesn't mean that it's not a safe neighborhood. Some of us got to really step back and ask ourselves, how bad do we really want freedom? How bad do we really want uh, uh, financial options and, 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 and opportunities? The greatest enemy to our success, the greatest enemy to us really reaching the goals is our excuse. What's our excuse? Hey, Tom, how are you? What's our excuse? The, the best the best school? What, what's our excuse? The best, the 100% perfect environment? Man, I live in a great neighborhood right now. Homes are still getting broken into. Cars are still getting broken into. Nowhere is 100% safe. Now, let me say this again, because I do understand. Studies are showing nearly right now, currently in the year 2023, that nearly 70% of people live in paycheck to paycheck. When you dive deeper into this study, the study reveals that out of that 70%, a large portion of those are people who make over six figures. These are people who are living paycheck to paycheck because of inflation, because of job loss. But a lot of people saying, man, we have an income problem. And here's, here's the truth. We don't really have an income problem. We have a lack of utilizing our gifts and skills problem. You have the skills, you have the talents that God put on inside of you. And I wanna ask you this question, I'll be very honest. Are you utilizing them correctly? Or are you just going to work, getting that check, coming home, and not really utilizing your gifts and skills to build wealth, to pay off debt? Well, listen, I am hosting a free, a 100% free masterclass here with the next few days. And I'm teaching people how to build a personal brand, how to use the gifts and the skills that God put on the inside of you and turn that into an extra thousand to five thousand dollars a month to go towards paying off debt, to go towards, you know, building an emergency fund, to go towards building your dream home. But I'm going to go even a step further. What if you can use the same principles? I'm going to be teaching for free. You make an extra one thousand to five thousand. But what happens if you could turn it into a six figure income or maybe a seven figure income within the next couple of years? Well, if you are ready to take control of your money, if you're ready, ready to utilize the gifts and the skills God has given you to build a legacy, to build wealth for yourself, can you meet me? I want you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash save my seat. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash save my seat. Or you can click the link in today's show notes. It's 100% free. Come join me. Let me show you. Let me show you how we, my team and I, built a seven-figure brand and how we can put $1,000 in your pocket for the next 30 to 60 days. I'll see you soon. While I say that nowhere is 100% safe, I am not saying move into the projects, move into the hood if, 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 if you have the means to go somewhere else. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is don't max out your income or don't go above your, your, your 25% just so you can say you live in this neighborhood. I make great money. I make great money. And I just told myself, no, the bank approved me for a huge loan for a mortgage. And I said, no, my budget based upon my budget is X amount of dollars because I am not going to go over 25%. I do not want it because I love the freedom of doing the things that I want to do. And if I go above 25%, I'm not going to be able to do that. Some of y'all, when your lease is up, you need to move. Some of y'all need to go ahead and sell the home because you're stretched. You, you're, you're, you're frustrated. You and your spouse are arguing, not because y'all are, are mad at each other, it's because you're stressed with finances. And one of the biggest stress factors when it comes to finances are your mortgage payments. I really want you to sit back and think about it. Are we over 25%? Some of you all are. And if you're over 25%, sit down, look at your budget, have a conversation with your spouse, have a conversation with yourself or an accountability partner if you're single, and identify what can we do 
to change this. So now that we've sat down and we said, okay, cool, we have our mortgage payment. We need to sit down and talk about what utilities are we doing, all right? So now if we have the utilities here at, um, you got your water bill, I'm spending about $100 a month on water. I'm gonna go back and change that. Um, I'm spending about uh, $50 a month on my gas bill. I'm spending about, uh, I'm spending about on my home because I work out of my home right now. I'm spending about $150 on uh, cable and internet. And really it's just internet for me, right? It's just internet for me, I don't have cable. Um, I actually use, um, I pay for the app through my company. I don't pay for the box. No, 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 I don't, I don't do none of that. I don't do, I don't do none of that, all right? So my, let me uh, go over here, erase this. So this is going to be my, uh, what's this right here, y'all? This is gonna be my water bill. I didn't change that over to black. This is going to be my water bill. This is going to be my gas bill. This is going to be my cable and internet. Okay. Uh, then you know what? We have to add in my electricity. Um, my writing sucks, but I love it. Um, electric. Um, so we have on electric, I'm spending, depending on the summer months, I could be anywhere from three to $400 because I have a, I have a pretty nice size home. Uh, but then during the, the heat, uh, during the winter months, I'm, I mean, I'm not even running it. And I don't even run my heat. So I say on average, I'm spending about $200 a month on electricity, all right? $200 a month on electricity. I'm, I'm, I'm estimating that because high months for, for, for the heat for the summer, I love my house to be on at right around 68 to 70. Don't judge me. Um, but then also during the winter months, man, I'm maybe spending $50 a month because I'm not running any heat at, at all. All right. And so uh, that's that. So right there we have the housing. Uh, then let's go down to transportation. Um, if I am in this place, this person's shoes, I do not have uh, a mortgage payment. I'm not a mortgage payment, a car note, uh, but that's fine. I am going to put down on average, we're spending about what? Uh, let's just say we're spending about on average about $200 a month on gas for the car. I'm gonna put a uh, gas car. Y'all know what I mean there. And then for maintenance, um, I'm not really, I, mean, I don't think too many people are spending that much money on maintenance. You got oil changes, what, every three months or every five, 10,000 miles. So let's just say right there, you're setting aside, let's say $50 a month uh, for your for your gas, right? Uh, not your gas, for your maintenance. Maintenance, all right, so let's just say for oil change. Okay, for oil change, all right? So then from there, boom, we're gonna keep on going. Then for groceries. Now, this is where some of y'all mess up at. This is where some of y'all mess up right here. Let me, let me tell you right now. Some of y'all are spending way too much money on groceries. I'm a single man who eats a lot. I gotta eat three good solid meals a day because of my food regimen, plus some snacks. I'm only spending about $180 a month on groceries. Now, I'm spending that because I'm actually buying higher quality, healthy stuff. Let's be real. Some of y'all, you probably gonna get upset when I say this. Some of y'all not eating healthy. So you don't have to spend $180. I'm buying fish. I'm buying high protein chicken. And I'm buying from, from, from the Fresh Mart, right? So that stuff is expensive, but I'm also buying in bulk. Uh, so that way I'm not just buying one piece of fish, uh, custom. I'm going to the boat places and I'm getting bulk fish, bulk chicken. I'm grilling it. I'm putting it on my smoker. You know, I'm buying some bulk green beans because I just like green beans, only greens that I really like eating. Uh, so green beans, some brown rice, uh, and, and I'm, I'm buying gallons of water that I can just drink throughout the day. I'm only spending about $180 a month solely on groceries, right? Solely on groceries. Some of y'all are going grocery shopping and uh, some of you are like, yo, uh, I'm hungry. So you're buying what your stomach is looking at and what your body, which is someone wants to eat right now. But you're not thinking about the future of, okay, when I get home, how am I gonna make a meal? I don't know about some of y'all, put it, drop it in the chat, let me know. If you're on podcast again, come over to YouTube, drop it in the chat, or come over to my Instagram channel, drop me a DM. But how many of you all spent $150 on groceries, get home and realize you didn't buy anything that you could make into a meal? 
I've been there several times because I went when I was hungry, I bought chips, I bought crackers, I bought this, I bought that. But when I got home and I unpacked everything, I didn't put nothing in my freezer. <laughs> I didn't really put nothing in my refrigerator, but some drinks. Everything was going to my cabinet, a bunch of snacks, a bunch of this and that, that it really wasn't anything good for us to make for a meal. So we got $180 solely on groceries. Cell phone bill. I use Verizon. I rock with Verizon. Um, I'm spending $100 a month for my Verizon bill. If y'all know anybody who's better than Verizon, please let me know. I will switch over today. I need a cheaper bill. As a matter of fact, anybody who want to sponsor my show and you got a good cell phone service, holla at your boy because <laughs> I need a cheaper 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 bill on your every dollar app um too and when you are doing a zero based budget watch this you guys after you list that you after you list your cell phone and your your uh your cable bill you gotta list your, your subscriptions i'm probably spending right now a month honestly about 50 dollars a month on subscriptions i'm just gonna put subs i actually need to change that color so y'all can know that I'm only spending $50 a month on subs. How many of y'all are spending more than $50 a month? Drop it in the comments and let me know if you're spending more than $50 a month on subscriptions. How much? How much? How much? I can tell you right now, some of y'all are probably spending about $200 a month just on subscriptions. You got Hulu, you got Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Cinemax, Disney Plus. You ain't keep going? Some of you all got Spotify. Some of y'all got Amazon. Some of y'all paying for Pandora. Some of y'all paying for Satellite XM Radio. It, it makes no sense to me. Why are you paying for Satellite XM Radio when you're going to plug in your phone to get Apple CarPlay and you're going to open up your Spotify or your Apple Music to pay for it? Why are you listening to XM Radio? Why are we spending all these money on apps? Some of y'all have about five different apps that makes you look good, makes your smile look a little bit better, makes your, your smile, you can fix your teeth, make your teeth white when you know they're yellow. Huh? You, you make your smile a little bit smaller, but more polite. You, you, you get all your blemishes off of your face. Like y'all got apps for everything because you're trying to get your likes. If people don't like you for who you are, you are in the wrong place. You, you're around the wrong people. If people don't want to rock me because I got a dimple in the middle of my forehead, bye. I'm not going to get rid of my dimple on the internet so that you can see it in person. No, it's misleading. But you're paying money to make yourself look good when you're already a beautiful or a handsome individual. You got to list all of your subscriptions on this budget. And here's the truth, you guys. You all may list all this stuff. And at the end of the day, you all may come up and be like, oh, shoot, I'm overspending. And I'm about to show you right now. I'm not even adding up this stuff. I'm not even calculating this stuff. I don't know where we are right now, but we're about to add it all the way up. Some of y'all ladies are spending. Y'all about to get upset, but I already know it. Some of y'all spending $500 a month just on your hair. Just on your hair. I know that for a fact some of y'all spending that much money on your hair. I know that for a fact. Y'all buying weave. Y'all buying wigs. Y'all got to pay the person to put it in. <clears throat> I know someone right now, she spends about two grand a month on her hair. I'm like, what in the world? What are you doing? This is ridiculous. You can't work for me. You spending two grand a month on your hair. I don't want you working for me. That's just, that's just, that's just crazy. That's, that's just, that's just crazy. Brothers, what are we spending? I'm spending $200 a month on my haircuts. Let's pay, I pay $50 to get a haircut every week. $200 a month. Girls out here spending two grand, a grand, $500. You got to list that on there too. You got to list it on there too. Did I list my... Um, for my groceries, I did not. So for my dog, I'm spending about $50 a month for my dog food. Okay. That's dog food. All right. Then from there, we're going to come down here and we're going to list 
all of our debt. Some of y'all have a car note, $700 for the car note. Jesus, Jesus, okay? Some of y'all are spending about $500 a month on student loans. Jesus. And I'm leaving it right there. All right? So let's add all this up. Because remember, um, remember this is all about spending all $5,000 of this on paper before the month begins so you can see exactly where you are. So if you are giving away $500 to your local church, you're giving away another $50, that puts you at five fifty plus. You're giving you're giving yourself another two hundred dollars into your savings. You're at seven fifty. Then we had when we add in our housing and our living expenses, twelve hundred and fifty dollars for our mortgage or rent payment, another hundred dollars there for our water bill, fifty dollars for our gas, hundred and fifty dollars for um, our cable and internet, two hundred dollars for our electricity, two hundred dollars for gas, uh, fifty dollars for our oil changes and car maintenance. Then we got $180 for our grocery bills. And we have $100 for our cell phone. That puts us at $3,030. And we come down here, we add in another $50 for our subscription plans, another $500 for our hair. Then we have another $50 for our dog food. We're at $36.30 already. And then let's just say we have a car payment of $700. That's $4,330. And we have another $500 for our student loans. We're at $4,830, right? So already we are close to our $5,000. And check this out, you guys. We didn't even talk about car insurance. So let's just say we're spending right now on average, uh, let's say we're spending $100 on car insurance, right? So what does that put us at? Let's just put that in insurance. Okay. Okay, that puts us at $4,930. So if we are at, give me an example here, if we are at a total of $4,930, that means out of the $5,000 that we have to spend, because that is our net pay, net pay we have 5,000, make sure I'm doing my math right here for y'all. Uh, we have $70 left on paper that we need to spend. So if this was the case, and I, I am that person, I'm spending that $70 on myself. You can bring it back to me, Walt. Having a zero-based budget, that's exactly what you do. Let's just say, for an example, we came up and we had $5,400 that we spent on paper. Well, then we know we have to go back to our budget and remove $400 from our budget. Some of us will go back to the budget, and because we are already so anal, because we're already spending every dollar we possibly can, you may not have a million and one subscriptions. You may not have somewhere else that you can actually uh, cut back from. The majority of us watching this can and should be cutting back. As a matter of fact, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I just thought about this off the top of my head. Didn't even tell my team this. This is exactly what um, I want you uh, to do. If you, if you want to come on my show and get a money makeover to where you're willing to come on the show, sit down with me, and we open up your bank account, uh, you tell me all of your debt, and we sit down, you tell me all of your income, and we sit down, and I answer your money questions, and we make a proven budget for you to follow for 90 days. I want you to go to my website, go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash I'm thinking in my head, what do we want to call this? I'm literally making this up on the spot. I'm going to have my team uh, put this form up literally right now because I want to get some of you all um, on the show. That's, that's, that's it. That's exactly, that's exactly what we're going to do. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash money makeover. 
anthonyoneal.com forward slash money makeover. Fill out that form. You have to be willing to come on, come here to the table. You have to be transparent and honest. Of course, we're not going to put your personal information out there, but we are going to help people get on a clear zero base budget, help you understand and look at your money. And some of y'all may not like it, but I promise you, if you're willing to sit down with me at the table and help and allow me to help you with your finances, by this time next year, you will not be in the same place. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash money makeover, and we're going to see, we're going to have our team select two or three people. We may even do this once a month. I don't know. We may just do this once a month and just have y'all come over, and we just help you out. Because here's the thing. Don't be ashamed to come over here and get the help. Because you may represent thousands of people out there who are scared. But if you're serious about really, really, really changing your life, changing your financial situation and your financial career, go to anthonyneal.com forward slash money makeover. And we're going to bring you on to the show. Well, I can't say we're going to bring everybody on to the show, but we're going to reach out to people and we're going to help you. We're going to put a proven system in front of you. And we're going to help you with your makeover. I was, uh, as, as I'm ending the show, I was um, sitting down with a guy and I asked him, can I share? He just said, please don't share my name and where I'm from so people, people can't pinpoint me. Um, and he said this one thing. He said, um, he said, man, can you help me out my budget, man? He said, I cannot find the money. I can't, I, I just, I just can't get it. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, all right, okay, cool. I said, Hey, uh, this is what you're going to do. I said, when you come, uh, bring your last three months bank statements, bring your credit report. Um, and when you sit down, we're going to go through it. Uh, we're going to sit down and see, okay, exactly where your money's going at. Um, he was saying, man, I need to find at least another $300 in my income uh, just to give me a little $300 breathing room. I said, all right, cool. As I'm going through his bank statements, I started seeing some, um, I won't say the, the particular name, but I started seeing some items on his credit, not his credit, on his bank statement. And I was like, what is this? What is this? What is that? What is this? And I've seen it consistently every um, other day, every three days. I would see this charge. I would see this charge. I'm like, hey, bro, what is this? And and I'm just being honest with you all. I'm not saying no names where, where this particular brother is from because I don't want to give away his location. Uh, but he had a porn addiction. And he was buying certain things. And I said, well, hey, bro, the problem here is not the money. Uh, the problem is you. And I, I told him, I said, hey, number one, surface level, you got to stop doing that. That's where your money's going. But if you really need this, if you're feeling as if you got to spend money like this to please this need of yours, there's something deeper there that you need that you need to go seek actual help for. Not saying that he's sick because he's not sick, but like there's something down that he really hasn't learned about himself and he's covering up by buying porn. And I'm like, so... When it comes to adjusting your budget, you guys, sometimes you got to be real and get around someone who'll be very honest and transparent with you. And I'm going to do it in a loving way. I would love to have you a part of this because I believe that there are going to be testimonies out there. People are going to see your show because you're going to come on and you're going to inspire other people because you're going to be just like them. And we're going to protect you. We're going to cover you. If there's something on there that, that, that should not be seen, because we're going to talk before we come on and do this show, I will make sure to cover you properly. But also at the same time, I want to show people that, hey, people are adjusting their budget. So if you're really ready to sit down and to talk about your living expenses, um, and if you're really ready to really get the wisdom that you need to make your budget over, then, hey, go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash money makeover. And um, we're going to sit down and get your budget right. All right. This is how you do a zero-based budget. My friends, my family, my loved ones, I love you. God bless you. I'm going to see you on the next show. Peace out.